what is guys so um this session is less of a it's less of an educational one and it's more like you guys just watching me do stuff at the end of the day and in this segment i'm basically testing the email deliverability of my inside insight.at domain now the reason as to why it's important and the reason as to why i actually decided to share this is because this is a practice that you need to be doing with your domains, at least on a monthly basis, uh, especially if you're doing cold email outreaches, just to see where you're listed, how to unlist yourself, right? Where you're landing in inbox and where you're landing in spam. The previous video that I posted has been a review of GMAS and Glock apps, basically, which are the two deliverability Intel providers out there. So definitely check it out. And then this video is more of a, just me essentially playing around with the tools just to uh, see where I'm landing myself. Because previously I did a test on one of the outreach uh, domains that we use, but this one is for the, the, the core ones. So inside, inside, .at, etc. Key takeaways are, uh, you'll never have 100% deliverability if you're actively outreaching. Uh, make sure to not hit like a lot of spam lists. It's okay to be listed on, let's say one or two maximum, as long as you're not listed on like spam house or spam assassin, because then you are screwed. Um, and essentially, yeah, that's that. Also, uh, there like small issue that I've discovered with most of the warm up tools as well. So I've added it like towards the end, if I did, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, essentially, yeah, hit like, subscribe, and whatever questions you have, drop them in the comments below. So, I've been doing some research basically recently uh, just a little bit more into email deliverability which I think is you know pretty self-explanatory considering the latest videos that I've been releasing on the topic on the subject itself but um, I've just been trying to understand the differences between deliverability providers deliverability Intel providers like uh, GMAS a spam solver right and then um uh, glock apps as well and i mean i did a video on them as well just comparing the uh comparing the two this one right here like a couple of days ago but just to uh, analyze the 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 difference and the 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 potential again and just to highlight a couple of key points and a couple of key concepts that are, i feel are just absolutely necessary to know if you're doing any b2b outreach campaigns or anything of that sort these are the deliverability results of my main domain so that's at insideinsight.at, which is the main domain for the, um, the, the agency's website, etc. It's how it all started prior to the YouTube channel, prior to everything. And these are the results coming directly from that. And then these here are the results that are basically coming directly from GMAS spam solver. So it's telling me that out of, yeah, out of 20 inboxes that they're basically holding themselves, 17 have accepted my email as an inbox email one has accepted it as spam and then two have accepted it as they, they haven't even accepted it like it got lost in the way most important metric at the end of the day is this one so it's it's giving us these numbers with regards to deliverability then if we head over to glock apps which if you watch the previous video you'll understand the importance of pairing up the two essentially just to have better insight with regards to where your emails are landing if you open glock apps and you do the whole process of sending the um, the email to all the recipients that they have if you scroll here if you just look at the data you'll realize that AOL accepts my emails. Uh, Amazon Workmail accepts my emails. Fastmail accepts my emails. Uh, this accepts my emails as well. G Suite accepts my emails with no problem whatsoever, regardless of the fact that you know there's no SPF and the sender score is like whatever. Um, G Suite, GMX, etc. But on the flip side, there's one provider which doesn't accept my emails, and it is right here. Outlook doesn't accept my emails whatsoever. Neither does Hotmail and neither does GoDaddy. So the point that I'm trying to make is if you're doing B2B cold email outreaches, your emails will definitely have a deliverability that's below 100%. Like I think like the, the, the best rate at which it's going to range is like maybe... 85 to like 90 percent maximum but there will be like a 10 to 5 percent margin where you're either you accidentally got yourself onto some list or you you did a you did a campaign before that screwed up etc or like your records aren't set up there's always going to be that like five to ten percent that's sort of like up in the air and you don't know where the emails are going and it's normal and the 
essentially the faster that you can accept it as like a cold email marketeer, the better it's going to be. So, and deliverability tools like these are like an absolute must. They're, they're absolutely necessary in order to track the, um, the status of the campaign itself in order to see exactly where your emails are going and where they're not going more data with regards to, um, with regards to Glock apps. And I'm using the free version right now. You get three, uh, test credits just to see how your emails are performing, but more data, uh, that it also provides here, you see where you're blacklisted. So if you click on the blacklist and if we head over to problems, it should, is it this one? No. If you actually head onto the, uh, website itself, which it is an opening oh, right here. And you type in the captcha as well, cause you're not signed in. It actually gives you the uh, information of like why you're listed, when you got listed, etc. So it's telling that it's saying that uh, this IP has spam uh previously, which is interesting. I wonder what the results would be from uh, our SES server, which we can check. But yeah, fuck it. Let's test our SES server as well. Send it. All right. So now if you go back to Glock apps, it should basically, man, where the fuck is Glock apps? <laughs> right. Okay. If you click on view report, it takes some time and it will take some time until the, the order is given to the SMTP server to send and until it sends one by one, cause there's a sender rate as well that, uh, SAS basically gives you. But if you log into SES, you'll see your sender rate and, uh, this should take like five minutes to basically populate. And once the results are there, we'll basically be able to see how the SMTP server is performing as opposed to the G Suite server, because it's super important. So generally what I do right now, um, if I do cold email outreach campaigns uh, to a, a cleaned list, right? Um, that's like every single contact has been just checked one by one. Um, what I'll do is I'll always use my G Suite IP for those quote unquote whiskey addresses because it's pretty forgiving, right? And then for let's say email blasts that are to the growth hacker list or to people that sign up for the newsletter, etc., I'll always use the SMTP server so that the SMTP server is in like top state. And then the, the G Suite shared IP is like sorta, it's like my risky one. But I don't really do any um, risky outreaches anymore or honestly ever on uh, inside inside.at generally if you want to play around and do a risky outreach it's uh, again it just goes to like what i refer to as the uh, the satellite domains quote unquote because if your domain gets listed with spam house or whatever your your entire website could go down so just important stuff to know i mean that's that's essentially why satellite domains are used Apart from the fact that, you know, you'd want to protect your main domain's deliverability. Uh, you wouldn't want your website going down. <laughs> then you need to, if your website goes down because of email spam, you then need to basically reach out to the lister, right? And once you reach out to the lister, right, you need to basically beg them to restore the domain from spam back to normal. In some cases they do, in some cases they don't. So even with our SMTP uh, right here, you can see that, again, deliverability isn't 100. And it just reflects back onto the rule of deliverability never will be 100. Um, there will be some cases where it's, you know, it's pretty screwed up. There are things you can do about it or, and on the flip side, you can just accept it and just do cold email outreach campaigns that are, you know, compliant, normal, et cetera. The list is clean, bounce checked, so on and so forth. And just accept that, you know, 100% deliverability is like a, a dream in cold email land, quote unquote. So the faster you can accept that, the faster you can start doing campaigns over the long run. But I just want to check the, uh, uh, I just want to check the, the fetching, like the final results. And we're out of credits. Fuck. Pretty cool tool. Um, I'll probably get the premium as well.
but for the moment I'm just taking advantage of this so if we check 4.3 missing um, if we check here we have a 60% deliverability so 60% lands in inbox 33.3% lands in spam um, Thirty three point three percent lands and spam four point three goes missing if we refresh right now the missing should disappear Probably means that there's some lag. Yeah, so the missing is decreased now Let's check which inboxes are basically discriminating against our uh, Wonderful SMTP server so AOL They're slow. They're they're like pretty discriminatory with regards to it. I just want to check the blacklist that I'm listed on as well it's okay to be listed on some blacklists as well. It's not like, you know, you'll be listed on a couple of blacklists and that's it. Um, but just checking the... Wow. Outlook, again, spam 100%, which is pretty interesting. If I also check the other inbox that I did a test with, it's uh, reports. It was this one, which was the lowest. If we head over, yeah, head over to the spam. Outlook to spam and then the rest were basically missing a lot of the emails that I sent with this domain uh, Right here have been missing because I couldn't get the uh, I couldn't get the bulk sender uh, Set up right to basically target all their emails, but you can see that the uh, situation here is uh, pretty uh, Like it doesn't look too good, but on the flip side just of a you know a more clean address basically uh, Oh, you could just buy inbox test credits. That's interesting. Yeah, so if I do use Glock apps, I'd probably just buy inbox test credits like one by one as opposed to um, a monthly a monthly thing and then just test from there. It's definitely worth it because the, the insight that you get with this tool, I really haven't found any other tool that gives it. So if we just, so the, yeah, the, the G Suite email, the G Suite shared IP has better deliverability as opposed to the SMTP, so the SAS one. And uh, Outlook really doesn't like us. So again, the, the, the whole point of this exercise basically is just to show you the intrinsics of like the data that it actually like gives out and uh, also to invite you to test out your, your own domains just to, to see what's landing where, etc., and to also basically assure you that you know it's okay if your deliverability isn't 100 it, it doesn't mean that like you know the the domain is burnt or whatever just keep an eye on this number at the end of the day 76 percent okay anything below 50 percent is like okay like you have some work to do as a matter of fact anything below 60 percent to be entirely honest but 60 and higher like it's it's generally okay plug it into a warm-up tool check out warm-up inbox or uh, G is uh, whatever it's called and um, basically rock and roll from there and now on the flip side the biggest problem that I'm G Mass's email warm-up is free right but the biggest problem that I'm seeing at the moment is that they're all G Suite emails right so if we head over to the analytics of the inboxes right they're all G Suite emails. So we're being warmed up with G Suite emails like Gmail Interactive, G Suite, etc. They're bouncing around and they're happy. So we'll always land in primary inbox within Gmail, etc. But on the flip side, if you check mail dot if, if you check Outlook, for instance, right? The, we're probably landing in spam because there's no warm-up happening on Outlook. Because G warm, G Mass is warm up, G warm is happening on G Suite, warm up inbox is happening on G Suite, but there's no warm up that's happening on Outlook. So it could be one of the driving factors with regards to us landing in spam and potentially a solution as well. But anyways, guys, that's that. Test out your uh, test out your domains as well. And if you have any questions, ask them in the uh, comments below.